Well, hello and good morning from sunny Amsterdam. And it's 22 degrees and it's not 40 degrees like it is in Medjugorje. That's one thing I won't miss in Medjugorje was that scorching heat in August and July. So, as you can see, I'm in Amsterdam and I'm in a busy street. And <coughs> Amsterdam is renowned for its drugs, its uh, legalization of marijuana. Well, as you can see, I'm not swamped into the drug culture. I'm actually praying. I'm actually absorbing the prayerful atmosphere that I have through God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, because God sends me out to these places because he wants me to bring Medjugorje to those people who are drug addicts, who are gay, who are LGBT, who are marginalized, who need God. And it's easy to stay in Medjugorje and live in holy huddle. But what is it, what is used to being a Christian, even our lady went out, even our lady went to the margins to her cousin Elizabeth. So we're called to do the same thing. We're called to go out to evangelize as Christians. And my calling is to go away on my own and to absorb God, trust God and to be tested. And as a former recovering person who took a lot of drugs, I'm tested here, I get tempted. I get uh, tempted to go away and smoke weed and take loads of cocaine, etc, etc. Et because it's easy to run away from the cross. But it's actually in going out and meeting people like me in the past who are stuck in drugs, who are stuck in depression, who are stuck in a rut in, the wor in, world in worldliness. And it's easy to judge from a per spiritual pedestal, but it's when you go out and meet people who are addicts, who are like the, are like I was, your hope, your ray of hope, because they see something in you that they don't have. Contentment, peace, Jesus, the angels, the saints, a prayer life. And that is worth more than a life of drugs and debauchery because I came from that life. So God took me and rescued me from that life so I can go back into that world that nearly killed me and be a ray of hope and a ray of light for people. And like the other night, I was in a bar and I was talking to a young person and they were going through a hard time and they met me and they opened up to me and they, they even said, I don't know why I'm opening up to you. And this person, I was speaking to them and I said, you've had a hard day at work, haven't you? And he was like, how do you know? I said, I can see it. And he got intrigued by it. No one's ever said something like that to him in a bar before. So then before he knew it, we were talking about Our Lady, about Medjugorje, about my village, about prayer. And he had no friends. He was lonely. And I said, well, I'm kind of the same as you. I have no friends. I'm lonely. And then I was able to open up in my vulnerability to, about my life and about circumstances that I have that I'm sent out to help people uh, who, are, who are stuck in life and who need a ray of hope and a rope of hope. And I'm that rope of hope. I'm that broken person that Jesus has decided to call and to reach out and to bring people back to love, to light, to holiness. And it's easy to run away from the cross and run away from God <clears throat> when you're alone here and you're surrounded by people who are taking drugs, who are stuck in the world. But now I'm on the other side of the spectrum. Here I am, recovering and partially healed from drugs, partially healed from my wounds, yet God sends me out and two places where people are high as kites <laughs> and stuck in the world and then here I am tempted to go back to that life and I have fallen sometimes don't get me wrong but I'm not living that lifestyle because if, if I was I wouldn't be talking about prayer I wouldn't be talking about Jesus and I wouldn't be living in Medjugorje I'd be packing up my things and living out here to, to, to a life of hedonism and <laughs> madness but it's just you know people are struggling you know, it, it hits home when you come here. People are struggling. There's a, drugs are, ta are taken by young people so much. Like, weed is no normalised here and all that. But, like, there's people there who can't get off it. And it's only through the a grace of God that I was able to get off my vices. But I still struggle. But I don't, it's not my lifestyle. Prayer is my lifestyle. That's the key. If you keep praying and going to confessions and living in the sacraments, that's how you get sustained. And I fall sometimes from time to time. But it's not my lifestyle. And that's the key. That's the key to success. Jesus, the sacraments, Mass is the key. And that's my life. My lifestyle is Jesus. My lifestyle is prayer. My lifestyle is going out and meeting people where they're at and giving them a Jesus experience. And that's how we can change. And we can't judge people who are stuck in weed, who are stuck in alcohol, who are stuck in gambling. 
because only for the grace God's given me and the perception he's given me I'd be where they are so that's the that's the lesson that's the way of hope so it's lonely it's I spent a lot yesterday crying and suffering like Jesus because it's very lonely to be here alone walking the streets and you cry and you really feel Jesus' pain because he suffers for these souls and he feels lonely and abandoned by the world because very few people want to talk about him. So I'm honoured to share in his loneliness, his emptiness and his longing for humanity to come to know him and that's why what makes it so strong, what makes it so worthwhile because if you save one soul then you know you have Jesus in a way but I want to save more than one. I want to have to save more than one. It's, he, it's him that does it. But like... <clears throat> I just wanted to give you a little catch up on like what I'm doing and how hard it can be and I'm staying in a hostel and it's not easy but it's it's doable on a cheap uh, budget and I'm also uh, finding it easy to eat because there's a ladle near me and I can get sandwiches and stuff and and like I'll give you an example <coughs> I've got a bit of a sore throat last night I was guided to the cinema and I was praying and our lady told me in prayer, pack a bag for the cinema. So I packed, because you know the cinema is so expensive, especially in cities like this. So I packed a bag with some drinks, some crisps, some popcorn, etc., etc., from Lidl. And then uh, I spent the last donation on my card, but I had some cash that was given to me for donations, so I had money, a little bit. Uh, always enough. <clears throat> and then I kept feeling her lady guide me to the cinema, so I was like, okay, went to the cinema, they don't take cash. So I was like, oh, for flip's sake, come on, come on. I went to another cinema. Sorry, we don't take cash. So I was like, our lady, look, give me a miracle. If you really want me to go to the cinema, give me a miracle. So then this girl said, okay, I'm going to write down some uh, cinema, cinema places where we might take cash. And then halfway through, she said, hold on. Here, have the cinema on me and have a free cup of tea. Well, I just, like, the tears ran down my face. Because I was like, you just don't know what this means to me. Here I am alone in the city and all I do is want to help people and bring people back to God. And because I'm doing that, God rewarded me with that cinema ticket. Like, it's the small things. I could even cry right now thinking about it. But this is the stress and the pressure that he puts me under. The loneliness, the being pushed away where no one knows you. There's only one person you can rely on and that's God but he uses people and this girl mightn't even have been Christian but she still felt prompted by God to give me that free ticket and to give me that free drink but that made it meant the world to me in that moment because I'd been through a bit of excruciating pain and suffering but that's worth it and that's one example of following God and being pushed but then the movie was in French but English subtitles and it spoke to me because it was about a person on her own who was a prostitute who was labelled as a sex maniac and I've been labelled those things as well and she she went, she went, became part of the royal family and made a name for herself and then, you know and God's trying, trying to use me to make a name for myself under him under his royal family so it kind of spoke to me about look, even the greatest sinners can become something even the people with backgrounds of excruciating pain, pain sorrow uh, shamefulness you know, we all can be transformed. And it just shows you, even God can call you to the cinema and give you an experience and speak to you through the cinema. Because God can use any means to, to contact or talk to you. And that is what I want to teach you. It's like, you're never alone, alone. And he'll always use people to help you. But it's just having a prayer life. And people were t coming to me and asking me, what prayers do you recommend? And I said, well, devotionals are good. I, I, I pray a lot of devotionals. The rosary is my one devotional devotional that I pray often. But if it can promote any devotional, it's talking to Jesus and God with your heart. God wants your heart. He wants your vulnerability. He wants you to open up to him. And through these experiences and through being on my own, through being sent out to cities, it's where I find God. It's where I find serenity. It's where I find excruciating, excruciating suffering. But it's through sufferings like yesterday that I got a resurrection. I got a free meal, near, well, a free cinema ticket and a free cup of tea. That, that was what I needed and God knew what I needed but I obeyed and I listened and I, and I felt his promptings and then it led me to something that he had planned for me and, I, and it's not easy it's excruciating like I, w like I wouldn't choose this life like I, I could 
it'd be easy to stay in Medjugorje and not go out. But sure, what good's that? Where's the cross? Where's the meeting the people where they're at? Where's the evangelization? Where's meeting the stranger? Where's the... There's more to being a Christian than just praying. You have to go out and you have to be that light and be that someone and be that ray of hope. And that's where the joy comes from. That's where the mission comes from. That's where the purpose comes from. We are all called to serve. And that is what I'm trying to teach you and what's God using me in this extraordinary journey to teach you. And God, I want to shake him sometimes because of what he puts you through. But it's moments like this where I can sit and reflect and say, look, once upon a time, drugs, sex and rock and roll was my lifestyle. But it's actually when he takes me to a place like this where I actually realise that love, life, hope, joy, prayer, the sacraments, Mass, Mary, Jesus, the saints are my life now and my lifestyle. But it's actually being tempted and being wanting to run away and maybe go and smoke a bit of weed or go and take a line of cocaine is like showing me that actually this isn't my lifestyle anymore. God is actually my lifestyle. God is my father and he's putting me here and giving me, putting me in these situations to show me how much I've grown, how much I depend on him and how much I've strengthened. And every time I'm sent out to a city or a town, I'm being trained, I'm being toughened, I'm being made, made into a man, into a soldier. And then I can go out and I can be vulnerable because I can say to these people who are drug addicts, who are like me, who were like me, look, I'm still struggling in this area. I'm still tempted, but look, I'm a work in progress. And look, I'm suffering. I'm, I'm just like you, but I have God and I want you to have God. And then when you have God in your life and you have prayer in your life, you can achieve and overcome anything. And that is the mission. That is what I'm doing. And that's what I'm trying to do. And that's what it's great to share. Look, here I am in the middle of a city, knowing nobody, no friends, but I have God. And I've got people back home and on my little online community who watch me and who support me. And yeah, and it's an amazing journey. It's excruciatingly, excruciatingly hard, but I, just, I need prayer, I need support, I need help. And God might use you to help me. So if you feel inspired to help me further this mission, because if you're helping me, you're helping God, where I can go out and I can meet people and I can bring them back to God and give them a life of purity, chastity, living the sacraments and going to Mass and really getting to know Jesus because that's my mission. My mission is to bring all souls to God and to teach them and, and integrate them into the church and give them a life of sacramental love, sacramental life where they will receive life in the full and abundance from God. And it won't be easy. There's a cross involved, there's suffering involved, but joy comes through the suffering and purpose, contentment, serenity, peace. Pray the rosary, go to Mass, Go to confession often and you will and your life will change and your life will turn around. So <laughs> thank you for listening. Thank you for listening to me waffle on here. But I just wanted to let you know it's going okay, it's going well, but it's hard. Uh, I don't know where I'm staying tonight, but I, I really will let me know. I've got a little bit of money left and I feel I'm gonna stay here for another while. But if anyone feels inspired to help this missionary do more work for God and help God, get in touch and uh, we'll take it from there but I will pray for you and I'll offer up my suffering for you and I just want to thank you all for listening thank you all for watching and may God bless you may God keep you safe and thanks for all your support all your help behind me all the way you guys that have watched and supported me it really means a lot and I hope that you can uh, pray more love more and go out more and preach about God more by your actions in Jesus name Amen God bless and I'll catch up with you next time.